Warning. The following podcast contains two morons talking about sophisticated subject matter, like ninus and hoo-hahs. Also, a few whoopsie-daisies and at least one house or ante. If you don't have a strong stomach, you know where the door is. Right. On with the shenanigans, then. The podcast which you are about to hear is an account of the tragedy which befell two washed-up losers. In particular, Court Psyops and his immature co-host, Matt. It was all the more tragic in that they were uncultured morons. But had they lived very, very full lives, they could not have expected nor would they have wished to see as much of the mad and macabre as they were to see each week. For them, an idiotic podcast show became a nightmare. The events of each week were to lead to the discovery of one of the most bizarre crimes in the annals of American history, Cinema Psyops with Court and Matt. What is Psyops? Psyops for psychological operations is very simply the art of influencing how people feel and think and ultimately how they behave and what they do. You don't have to defeat the enemy on the battlefield. It's better if you can convince the enemy to do what you want him to do without having to fight him. And that's really the intent behind Psyops, to convince people to do what you want them to do. So how does PSYOPs fit into what's happening now? The two points I'd like to make with you and the audience is that, first and foremost, PSYOPs save lives. The second thing I'd like to say, a lot of people have misconception about PSYOPs. They think it's something devious and brainwashing. you don't know exactly what's going on right now but we do know that there are some psyops going on right ma'am i don't know cinema psyops and i believe with all of my heart that it is a contributing factor to our juvenile delinquency of today why i believe that is because i know how it feels i know what it does to you cinema psyops they think it's something devious and brainwashing And welcome to Cinema Psyops. I am Court. I have worked very hard with the dialogue coaches from Veratica to give you an authentic French accent. I am your host, and your co-host is Matt. We. Oui. <laughs> that's all I have. That's all I fucking got. I, that's all. That's the only work I was gonna do. La petite morte. <laughs> I mean, what the fuck, man? Hey, 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 hey. Tamp it, tamp it. We're not in the review yet. Tamp it. All right, all right, all right. All right. Tamp it. Bet it. I mean, tamp it. I can't even see you. I can feel it. Tamp it. I just... All right, are you good? Uh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, I, was, I also realized I had not changed my chair to the less noisy chair, so... <laughs> right, okay. Now just keep cool. Everybody knows what's coming. They, I mean, they know what's going to happen. Am I the only person who didn't know this movie existed? Maybe. Everybody that's going to be listening to this show is aware of Erotica. All right? Oh. Now, all right. I'd like to give you a brief explanation as to how this ended up on the show. Yeah, uh, please do. I was home alone. I was rather inebriated. I found Veronica and watched it. I kind of live tweeted or live commented on my post in Cinema PsyOps as I was watching it, all of my reactions to it. And we got such a good response. At one point, someone said, you should do this on your show. Or actually, someone said that they were going to suggest that uh, Ricky and Johnny do it on Short Bus Cinema. And I said, fuck no, I got to do this on my show. And I said, Matt PsyOp is going to fucking hate this. <laughs> <laughs> so my reactions and the anger and the rage that you're feeling, the audience is already kind of aware of some of the similar shit that I was going through and the frustration and the confusion as I was watching it. That's why I'm telling you, just tamp it down, man. We got to hold it for the actual review. Ah, all right, fine. <laughs> Can we fucking hurry up then? This is the tantric. Fucking do this. This is the tantric episode of Cinema Psyops. We're going to let it build with anticipation until that glorious moment where, where we I can have s- a rage orgasm. <laughs> right. <laughs> where a vein bursts in your head, and that's as good as coming. <sighs> Coincidentally, I've been watching a lot of fucking shitty movies lately. So, yeah. no, no, not, not not for the show. Just just, just scouring. Light. Yeah. <laughs> the same night that I watched Veronica, I also watched I Spit on Your Grave Deja Vu. Have you heard of that or are you aware that that even exists? Uh, 
No, but what the fuck is that? All right. The original director and writer of I Spit on Your Grave and the actress Camille Keaton, who played Jennifer in the original I Spit on Your Grave, Mm -hmm. team up again and they make a sequel, which is pretty much a direct sequel to the events of everything that happened in I Spit on Your Grave and what happens with this woman's life later on. And uh, her and her daughter get kidnapped by the family of the families of like their victims of Jennifer's victims for the people that she murdered after her rape so like the the revenge portion of it and then they get revenge on their revenge so they're trying to kidnap what i have rightfully stolen with their vengeance holy fuck (laughs) so then i'm assuming she and her daughter get re-raped well she gets re-raped and her daughter gets newly raped i'm assuming um i don't want to say but i will say this it's two and a half fucking hours and it feels like two and a half fucking lifetimes i got so angry and frustrated at this movie and like just so done with it i decided to take a drive matt on a friday night through the busier parts of town i mean are we gonna make us do this fucking movie aren't you no we're not gonna do no i I don't want to sit through two and a half hours of i spit on your grave deja vu again just to talk about it on the show i if if i can get if i can get a pass really watching it again and just make you watch it (laughs) yeah we should really shut up about it though because then we'll be like oh open it up to you listeners what do you want us to do we're gonna fucking flood us with it all right so i finished (laughs) that and then i'm like well fuck i've already watched the worst thing i could ever possibly see in my life i spit on your great deja vu how much worse can veronica really be The, the answer about to be displayed for everyone to see and or hear in our next segment. So we're going to take the little break right here. We're going to play right. a little 90s inspired industrial music. It's a because Nine Inch Nails ripoff, that? folks. Well, because in the 90s, Glenn Danzig started the Veronica comic book company and yeah. started publishing these stories. And also in the 90s, Glenn Danzig switched over from being metal to trying to be more industrial to try and get with the times. And so that's a little jibe at him. Well, good for him. <laughs> All right, yes. folks, we're going to take the break. We're going to play a little bit of 90s industrial, which is just a giant Nine Inch Nails ripoff. We'll have, instead of a trailer for Veronica, because it tells you fuck all other than that all the people that reviewed it favorably are lying, <laughs> we're going to have just a brief description of it before we start the film. So here we go. This is Bo from LegionPodcasts.com. Hey, it's been a crazy time, and when the world gets nuts, we're happy to offer some old-fashioned podcast entertainment. But for some folks, getting a laugh out of a show isn't really helping these days. People who depend on tips in their bartending jobs or have been put on furlough with no pay till the worst of this coronavirus threat has passed. That's a tough spot. That's why we set up a GoFundMe for members of our community, a sort of grand scale take a penny, leave a penny. For people like myself, for whom the recent disruptions haven't kicked us out of work, well, we can drop a few of those extra pennies in the GoFundMe jar for those who are directly affected by recent events and find themselves looking for money to pay the electric bill or keep the water on, well, how about you give me a shout at bo, B-O, at legionpodcasts.com. Let me know the situation and what you need, and we'll do our best to make life a little easier. And you can find links to the GoFundMe on the front page of legionpodcasts.com on our Facebook group page or on Twitter at Legion Podcasts, where it's the pinned tweet. For those of you who are able, thanks in advance for chipping in. And members of our community who need a hand, hey, here we are. Remember, stay safe, stay healthy, and we're all going to get through this together. Legion isn't just a name, it's who we are. Thanks for listening to all the shows here on Legion Podcasts, and we'll talk to you soon.
trying to figure it out because it doesn't sound quite like Nine Inch Nails. <laughs> you know what also doesn't sound like Nine Inch Nails? The trailer? It's not the trailer. It's just a brief description because the trailer tells you fuck all about the movie. Are you fucking kidding me? Glenn Danzig, writer, songwriter, comic book creator, film director, cinematographer. Is there anything the man can't do? Well, make a coherent film, apparently. Veronica, which debuted in May 2019 at the Cinepocalypse Festival, is at once everything you could possibly hope for in a Danzig-directed film and a total disappointment. In a word, it's an enigma, but one that doesn't quite understand what the word enigma means. It's dark and violent, but elicits scornful laughter every time it feebly attempts to shock its audience. Kool-Aid blood gushes from wounds Tom Savini would give a failing grade, and between each ostensibly horrific set piece lies a long stretch of nothingness that will bring out the nihilist in everyone watching. Most movies feature a beginning, middle, and end, but Glenn Danzig has found something in between. Veronica is so inept made that it makes big-titted strippers unappealing. It's 90 minutes long, but takes four hours to watch. It's so staggeringly conceited that one of the worst special effects in the entire film gets its own special credit in the opening titles. If you're unaware of former Misfits frontman Glenn Danzig's directorial debut, here's the long and short of it. Back in the 90s, Danzig decided to start his own comic book imprint entitled Verotic Comics. Within these pages, he presented the reader with all sorts of anatomically incorrect naked bimbos, edgelord demons, and outlandish violence. After many years of trying to get a movie version off the ground, Danzig managed to get funding from Cleopatra Records and finally presented the world with his vision, which consists of three stories without any actual, well, story. All right. Does that clear some things up for you, Matt? I mean, yeah, he, he got to make a shit movie. All right. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, it's understandable. Uh, da, 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 tamp it, tamp it. We're not there just Fuck, yet. I thought we are in it. <laughs> not, just, not just yet, Matt. We're almost <sighs> there. We're almost there. Fucking, you're edging me a little bit too long here. <laughs> Don't you're, tell you're me being, my business. You're being, you're being the, a different kind of edge lord. <laughs> I make money from my sex work. I'll take your word <laughs> for it, then. All right, go ahead. Do your review. Go ahead. All right, Veronica. Oh, by All the right, way, so- by the way, one more, one more thing before just, yeah, yeah, just yeah. tamp it down just a little bit more. Yeah. Verotica is the portmanteau of the words violence and erotica. All right, that's a Glenn Danzigism. All right, so this is uh, apparently a three-story movie. So instead of breaking it into twenty minutes, I'm breaking it into the three stories. But anyway, we begin with the girl. She's all chained up against a wall, and we see this uh, woman come walking towards her. She's got long fingernails, and uh, I mean she pokes out the girl's eyeballs that is actually pretty cool and i was like well maybe there's something to this place you know that maybe this isn't so bad maybe maybe this would be uh pretty interesting um and unfortunately that will be the last time i will say that did you recognize the actress that was doing the eye poking no be honest i, I seriously i don't caden cross does that name sound familiar yes yes i know she's a porn star yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. You so- want to know? You want to know the the very weird reason why I know that? Why? It, it's not because of porn. It's because of the Howard Stern show. And Howard Stern had a uh, his one of his employees, JD, had a quote unquote relationship with Caden Cross, or she was fucking him to get publicity from the show. So that's how I know of Caden Cross. All right. So Caden Cross is Morella in this, and yes, she did a. Adult films previous to this. I don't know what other acting she's done. This is the first thing I've literally ever seen her in. And uh, from looking at photos of her not looking like Morella makes me not that interested in seeing her in anything else. <laughs> Just not well, my type. It, it was still, it was a cool effect. I, I, yes. Not bad. Yes. This opening gives you some hope, even though it looks like it's cheaply produced. You're like, okay, they didn't have a lot of money, but look what they did with it. Let's go. You've got. Yeah, maybe the, all the money went to all the effects, but you don't realize all the money went to. Just wait one effect <laughs> just let's go let's keep right, going all right, we're all right, good all right, all right. so um she, she welcomes us to veronica okay we get the opening credits and well, holy shit x packs in this <laughs> well that's that's kind of cool uh so anyway um <laughs> x Pac was one of the actors yeah 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 i'll, I'll, I'll tell you which scene okay because um, i really don't recognize him anymore oh yeah 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 uh, so, in fact he's one of the clips uh, <laughs> i only t- was able to get four <laughs> <laughs> uh, and, I, and I was pushing it before. Um, all right, so we start out and we see this dude's getting head. And um, 
and and a spider is watching, and so you're like, uh, uh, all right, bad CG uh, anyway, spider. Yeah, uh, yeah, bad, real bad, just like like fucking terrible. When did this come out again? 2019. Holy fuck! It looks like it was made like the like the 1997. Yeah, it looks like PlayStation One graphics on like the early PlayStation One games. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's the in-game play of Final Fantasy VII level of spider CG. Exactly. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, so, sorry. All right. So, anyway. So, then the dude, he brings her up, and they start making out, and then he, he uh, he wants to see the, uh, he wants to see the, the cans, uh, and she, she has mighty, mighty cans, uh, the, the bionic cans. Did you recognize this actress by any chance? No. Her name is Ashley Wisdom, who plays Dejet with the, uh, ever so pink hair. I was gonna ask, are all the girls in this porn stars? Not that I'm aware of, however, it is disproportionately a large amount of adult actors in the film gotcha okay just wanted to make sure yeah. i was just i was just wondering it, for my own you'd be safer to assume that they were hired just because they were in pornography and or would look good naked it's safe to assume that the ones that are showing up naked would possibly fit that cliche um I gotcha. and i've got two pieces of information to back that up i can confirm at least three or four that i didn't necessarily recognize but could tell were definitely in the adult film industry like with this girl, I, I figured she was in the adult film industry, or at least some sort of fetish industry. Yes, this one. This actress was I was just talking about, Ashley yeah. Wisdom. She's been in quite a few films. I was searching to see if there is video evidence anywhere on the internet that I don't have to pay for to see for sure that she was in pornography, instead of just trusting IMDb's multiple, multiple credits. I gotcha. I also did the same work for Caden Cross. I was able to find video proof that she did in fact it act in adult films, but I was oh, more interested in checking out what films Ashley Wisdom may have starred in as well. All right, gotcha. So, anyway, uh, she's kind of fighting it. She doesn't want him to take her shirt off, but he really wants to see. Uh, they fight, they fight, and uh, we see why she didn't want him. Uh, she has no nips, but she has eyeballs on her boobs. Okay. Yeah. We gotta talk about this. Oh, okay, well, I, I would assume so, yeah. I mean, no, no, let's just blow over the fact that she has eyeballs on her tatas. I see spit my drink all over myself <laughs> when the reveal happened and they were eyeballs on nipples okay. i spit my drink all over myself the bed i was laying on watching this oh. <laughs> and my fucking poor cat that was laying on me i was <laughs> laughing so hard i couldn't stop and i think i terrified my cat for a good portion of the evening from what just happened with the like nearly projectile spit this was uh. so so badly revealed, this moment that's supposed to be yeah. horrifying and shocking was like a dark place reveal where I immediately just started laughing. Now, Dark Place is a brilliant fucking British comedic series based on a horror author who is possibly the most vile writer on the face of this earth, like just terrible, and is convinced that he's brilliant because he's written hundreds and hundreds of books. Yeah. So he makes a TV show and it's inept and stupid and badly made and every bit pathetic, and he's convinced it's brilliant. This moment where the boobs pop out and then they just try to sell it like this is a serious shocking horrifying moment i realized yeah. i was watching a movie made by garth marenghi that glenn danzig <laughs> is in fact garth marenghi all right i didn't laugh there but anyway i'll tell you where i did laugh um your teeth so, they're fucking staring at me okay so the guy leaves right and uh she's all broken hearted about it and she's crying and when you scroll down, her, uh, her, her, her boobs are crying as well. And that is when I laughed my balls off. That was the hilarious thing I'd ever seen in my entire fucking life. I was still trying to clean up and or stop laughing from the previous thing that made me laugh like yeah. giddy as fuck and just kind of like worried about what I just got myself into so that when the eyes where her nipples should be started crying, I <laughs> I completely lost it. It was one of those moments where it's like, oh, fuck it. I'm just going to change the bedding because <laughs> this will take I mean, less time. It, might, as, might as well at this point. Right. <laughs> um, so, um... Uh, so, but anyway, she has to be ready. Her roommate and best friend reminds her that they have a photo shoot, uh, the next day. Um, so anyway, uh, then as, uh, we kind of are just sitting around there, uh, the, uh, spider turns into an eight-armed creature, uh, half man, half spider. It got hit and by one of her boob tears, so her boob tears yeah. have special supernatural powers. Yes, 
Right. I mean, why not? And um, I'm not so saying spider- it's a good story point. I'm just saying that that's what the excuse was. Her boob tears turned the spider into this thing. I'm not saying this wasn't the original way Spider-Man got his powers. I'm just saying it might have been an idea. This is certainly so, the kinkiest ways for Spider-Man to get his power. Yeah. Um. So anyway, he tells her that she has to sleep so he can be real. So she falls asleep and then the creature kills her roommate by breaking her neck. Because why not? I mean, what else are you going to do? So, got eight arms. Might as well. I mean, fuck you're gonna use them for something um so then uh so then she wakes up and she finds her roommate hanging there and she's all like oh god and she talks to the creature and that is our first clip Kayla! Kayla! your friend she was a lot of fun Kayla! Kayla! oh i am hurt you are a murderer Yes, I am. I am. You. Fee, no, I would never do such a thing. Yes, I know. That is why I must do it. For you will not. No, no, it's not true. Leave me alone. I will leave you alone. Just sleep, Dajet. Then I will go. I will go do the things that you imprison in your mind. I will free you. But the erotic water the shed has bound inside her soul. No! No! It's reported that the actors worked with dialogue coaches to perfect their French accents because this first story, the uh, albino spider of Dajid, I think is what it's called. This yeah. first story takes place in France, Matt. So they had to make sure they got the accents as spot on as they possibly could. And the actors purportedly worked really hard at that. It says, this is IMDb trivia, man. So it has to be true. None yeah. of the French characters in the film are actually played by French actors. They're all American. Wow. And Glenn Danzig revealed in a Q&A that a professional voice coach was hired to teach the actors to speak in a French accent. Cool story. Um, uh, I call bullshit, but okay, whatever. Hey, listen, who am I? I'm a nobody. Okay. I'm- to be able to be calling yourself a professional at something, all you have to do is be paid to do said thing. Oh, yeah. You don't have to actually be good at it. Right. Hence why there are presidents that currently exist in the Oval Office of an Orange Persuasion. Yeah. Oh, fuck. All right. Well, <laughs> I mean, I didn't know we we're going to be fucking talking real talk because that hurts. Uh, <laughs> just saying, if you need proof that the word professional yeah. doesn't really mean too much of anything other than you got paid to do it. Exactly. There you go. But haven't you read he's not getting paid to do it? Right, right. Whatever. Move on. Move on. Yeah, 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 yeah. Ah. Focus your hate on Danzig in this movie. Oh, fucking. Oh. So anyway, um, so then uh, she, uh, they cut to some ladies of the night walking the streets, uh, you know, pop positioning men and such as they do. And um, one starts negotiating with Spider-Man, who is unseen around the corner. Uh, he tells her he wants to fuck her in the ass and then feel her neck breaking. She says, well, that's kind of fucking weird. That's a little bit off, isn't it? Because that's not usually something you'd want to hear somebody say. That's not usually what the Johns say. I mean, the first part is definitely what the Johns say, but that second part's definitely not what the Johns are usually talking about. She also so mentions anyway, that it's her specialty to get rear-ended. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so anyway, uh, uh, with all said and done, uh, he grabs her and he also breaks her neck. Can we talk about the uh, arms on the costume in this scene? You mean how they just don't fucking move at all? Yeah, sure. Why not? Fuck it. <laughs> the design of the costume is great for still images and for brief reveals. They could position yeah. the arms in such a way and then he can move his upper arms and that's cool. But like what they're trying to do where they're trying to make the arms grab people or any of that kind of stuff, it doesn't work for that at all. And the arms are very clearly fake. They very clearly do not move at all, which obviously they probably didn't have any money for animatronics and that's fine the actual makeup of the suit is decent enough i've seen far worse the sets themselves have been for low budget pretty much what you would expect for a no budget type movie um yeah the camera work is relatively decent and the shots setups and the lighting are good there were people that worked on this that knew what they were doing the problem is is that when you have an egocentrical madman at the helm an entire nation can die from one simple pandemic i mean movie can just go awry like this <laughs> Oh, okay. I'm sorry. I'm trying to oh, will myself to keep doing this. Um, 
So, uh, Dejet, then we see she was sleeping at this BDSM photo shoot, um, and she sees a news story about the murder of the prostitute and keeps telling her how she did that, that was her, and everyone's like, you were sleeping, everyone's like, you're kind of fucked up, but, every, you know, there's one girl's like, hey, your best friend just got murdered, you know, maybe that has something to do with it, and most of the other girls are just kind of catty bitches, uh, that's just, you know, an easy trope that's usually in all horror movies. Hey, um, uh, how many photo shoots? have you seen of BDSM models that are done in such glamorous fashion model-esque poses with groups of them together and not done in like a dungeon scene or something that would like really work with the actual outfits how many have you seen in like just like white seamless paper behind them like that can i can i be 100 percent i've seen how i have not seen any bdsm photo shoots like at all uh-huh. I, I couldn't honestly fucking tell you so you, you would have to answer that question for me okay i'm just gonna call bullshit on that because um the way that they're all dressed unless it is like they're supposed to be a band or something like that or it's for a band shot or something it doesn't make any sense or if they're going to put in a background later but then why isn't it green screen why is it this white seamless paper like you would have for you know doing a photo shoot that would end up on a magazine you know like yeah. what what the fuck and if I know, well i I, you know, you're, what you're saying makes sense. Right. That's a specialized type of photography. They're not just, yeah. they're not just like in specific outfits and it's not like a fashion type thing. The outfits that they're wearing are very specific, different types of fetish wear. And unless they're doing a photo shoot for like a BDSM physical print catalog, you just don't see that. That just doesn't exist. Yeah. And I know it's France. So maybe them being as cool as they are, their high fashion has moved into hardcore BDSM gimpsuit. I could be wrong. On, on white background. Right. I could be wrong. I'm just saying, aesthetically speaking, this feels very false and forced. That's, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm going to go ahead and say you're probably right. Uh... <laughs> you know what? Just in general, where we're at right now, we're barely even seven minutes into this. Everything about this film feels conceited and yes. forced and, and just... Off. And just not well thought out. And directionless. Yeah, yeah. It's a total rudderless ship in some ways, but at the same time, it feels like the person who is at the rudder knows where they're going, but the rest of us think they just let go. You know, that's what it looks like and feels like. Yeah. Well, anyway... um, Dejet leaves and she's like, I need to stay awake. So, of course, she goes inside a porn movie theater where it's dark and uh, she sits down. So, you know, because when I need to stay awake, I'm going to go inside any sort of theater where it's fucking dark and then go sit down. Also, what kind of a porn theater just puts a projector up that's basically just a fucking fan with yeah. like a spotlight behind it? And how is that producing the images that we see on the screen? I I don't know, Court. I'm, I, I can't answer your science questions now. I'm just trying to realize Danzig's fucking mission in life here, uh, which I'm, I'm not sure what it is. Okay. Other than, other than what it seems to annoy the fuck out of me. Okay. <laughs> now, I get the idea that you're stuck on right now where you're like, you know, when I'm sleepy, I need to go to a movie theater because that'll help yeah. keep me awake. Yeah, yeah. That's not, I don't, I fucking, what? what? I mean, what is that? Th- that's where I'm stuck. It's a brilliant fucking plan. You go to a movie theater to stay awake, Matt. No, you don't. You get in these really comfy recliner seats yeah. that are like heated okay, and super comfy, and wait, it wait, just keeps you por- awake. We're in a porn theater. Do, you, do, do we really think that they're super comfy? <laughs> no, but you sure will stick to them. Ah, there we go. Is she hoping that, was... that the sexual titillation in the porn theater is going to keep her awake? Maybe. That was the only thing I could think of that would that could make sense for this. That'll, possibly. That'll work for about five. Five, maybe 10 minutes and well, then immediately for, you're going to go to sleep that's uh, that's that's us i mean she could be different right <laughs> i mean we're we're simplistic creatures women are just unbelievably complicated down there anyway <laughs> Well, this woman is even more so complicated yeah, up there. Yeah, everywhere. Well, <laughs> I mean, listen, if, if, her, if her boobies have eyeballs, Lord knows what's going on with the vagina. That's all I'm saying. Can I ask you a, a very serious and very personal question? You bet. You're with a woman that looks exactly like her. She just uh, okay. she just finished gobbing your knob. Yeah. And you're ready to go to pound town for real on this girl. And uh-huh. she looks super sexy in that outfit. She's obviously very good at giving oral pleasure. You're into it. You're really happy. You pop off her shirt and see eyeballs. Do you freak out and run away? She just got done slopping my knob. Probably not. 
I mean, I'm listen. Right. Probably not. No, I'm, I'm. I'd probably stick around. Okay. So you see the eyeballs, and you yeah. get freaked out. Everybody does. Sure. Come on. I'd be like, holy shit. Next time, just warn me. But all right, just put, pull your shirt down. And we'll we'll take care of business. I think. Not necessarily pull your shirt down unless that would make her more comfortable. My thought would be, could yeah. you just close those eyes? <laughs> well, see, that's, well, yeah, you, you like to avoid eye contact. Right. Um, and if she closes see, them, are there nipples behind? Where the, or, or like, are the eyelids the actual nipples for those eye boobs? And, and now when she says, like, in like a professional setting, if she says, hello, my eyes are up here, can you get to look at her and say, well, you're a liar? <laughs> right. Okay, let's move on. We're going to be on this all day. I just, I'm curious, like. <laughs> I just, I wanted to know. So, um, she falls asleep and the creature wakes up and starts stalking prey. At the same time, three dudes of the theater get all real rapey with her sleeping body. Um, in their defense, they are pieces of shit. Okay. I was about to say, whoa. (laughs) Not where you thought I was going with this, huh? Yeah, no, settle down. You had me in the first half. I'm not going to lie. Um, (laughs) so sorry. Uh, talking about such a fucking classic makes me parched. Um, so anyway, right was about the creature is getting ready to, uh, kill, um, this, uh, other girl. Uh, she wakes up and the creature, you know, and leaves the theater. So the creature couldn't complete the killing. She, now, she, now here's a smart idea. She goes to a cafe, but they're closing. So she has to leave. But I mean, that was at least somewhat of a smart, you know, uh, plan right there. Okay, so she goes to a porn theater and she falls asleep. Three guys yeah. get all rapey on her. Mr. Albino Spider of Neck Snapping Doom doesn't show up to save her because he's too busy going out taking out his sexual frustrations on women for her. Why is she sexually yes. frustrated with other women? Is it because they can get laid and she can't? Like, I don't understand why. Possible, and also sometimes they're really mean to her. Or probably because the person who wrote this is Glenn Danzig and he likes the idea of women being, you know, strangled and, you know, treated rough instead of men getting vengeance upon them because it's not sexy and this is supposed to be violent erotica hey 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 yeah probably um (laughs) so anyway uh at home uh she gets at home and she calls the cops after she calls you see a bottle of pills laying next to her well the creature shows up and that's our next clip you you are here yes you brought me back and i was having so much fun You know, you may as well give yourself over to me. You will have to fall asleep again soon. You... You are... Too... Too late. Too late? Too late? Sleep... For... Forever. What have you done? You idiot! No, 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 this cannot be happening! Not now! So she starts falling down, dying. The cops show up. She does fully die. They bust in the door, find Spider-Man, shoot him dead. And uh, then the cops talk about her eye titties. And uh, that's that's the end of the first story. All right. She goes to the coffee shop. She never orders yeah. anything. She just sits she down a cup in front of her. She sits down in front of a cup that's already there. She never actually orders oh, okay. anything. The guy asks her for a re- if she wants a refill before he throws her out. Yeah, because they're closing. Right. And then he tells her to be careful. The next snapper. Right. That's the name for the albino spider killer guy. He's the next snapper. Yes. Le next snapper. Le next snapper. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Man, if we have any French listeners, they're going to be really offended. (laughs) Well, they can sop up their tears with the nice baguette. Yeah. (laughs) Damn, you fucker. (laughs) Whatever. Anyway. Whatever. I don't think anybody from France listens to (laughs) No, of course not. They're not going to go for our highfalutin shit. (laughs) No. No, we're, We're way too lowbrow. Right. Okay. She... Takes a bunch of sleeping pills that's going to be her death. And then when the spider dude reappears, this is when the arms look the fakest. You can see where the costume has had to been repaired. Clearly, they're running out of time. This thing's falling apart. There's a giant hole in the middle back of the thing where it looks like the crotch ripped out and they didn't have enough stuff to fix it in the suit. I don't know if you noticed that or not. Yeah. You know, a couple of the fingers were missing chunks out of them in the scene. Ugh. Well, I didn't see that part, but I mean, yeah. it wouldn't fucking surprise me. It's at this point, I am convinced for sure that this is Garth Marenghi's dark place because this is the most ludicrous thing that I've ever seen. This was fucking hilarious. I'm all in. Like, I'm yeah, just, right? I'm just like, this is clearly going to be awful. I can't wait. What's, what's going to be next? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, little do we know, we're kind of at the shining moment of this movie. 
Right. This is the pinnacle. This is as good yeah. as it's going to get. Yeah. It doesn't, uh, it doesn't really get, I mean, this is at best what it's going to be. Right. And I'm thinking, okay, so this is really bad. Maybe the next story will get better. Well, okay. So anyway, um, the hostess uh, has some eyeballs in her hand and it is time for uh, story number two. And we see a, we start out with a woman. She, uh, uh, she's kind of running. And then we see another woman with a knife and she says she wants her face and she takes her face and she cuts it off. The so, acting in here uh, is so bad. I'm pining for the French accents because clearly what I thought was really bad French accents and poor acting was a godsend compared to this scene. Yeah, right. Um, so anyway, um, we cut to a strip club and it's time for the wonderful mystery girl. So they get out there and they, you know, uh, she dances and she dances and there's some dudes like offering her money and she, he like sees she's kind of like scored around the eyeballs or kind of looks weird. So he runs fucking away. Um, well, the cops and I, I had to take this clip. The cops find the body in the alley and that's our next clip. What do you got? What we got is grizzly, Sarge. Oh, yeah? How grizzly? Pretty grizzly. Face cut off, ear removed, no sign of any other body trauma. Cause of death, apparent shock and loss of blood. Nice. Another sicko killer. Anything else for me? Afraid not, sir. I mean, we, we, we've got nothing. Zero evidence, which means no leads or motive. Where's her face? Well, that's what I was going to get to, is whoever did this just didn't... Just left with it. And left no no trace, nowhere to be found. No blood trail. <sighs> Negatory. There's your motive. They wanted her face. Ugh, so it's gruesome. Remember that, Court. <laughs> How gruesome. Pretty gruesome. Just <laughs> when I thought Jesus. that the actress delivering the line, but my face, why? Yeah, but my face, why? In such a... <sighs> high school production of death of a salesman way i can't even yeah. describe it more than that where it's like you ever seen that kid you grow up with that kid in school that like all she's ever wanted was to be an actress her entire life and always make sure that she speaks in such a manner as to always appear to be the mid-atlantic accent at all times Given I mean, one role her entire life, it's this film, and she uses that accent and yeah. delivers in such a way, looking off, trying to pad her role. That's exactly what we got in that scene. And my it, hopes it, were dashed before the face slashing, which was also terrible. And then this, uh, I mean, again, the, the, the line that I I choked. I was I choked on my drink when I watched this. I was taking a drink, and all of a sudden he goes. Uh, it's pretty gruesome. Uh, pretty gruesome, detective. How how gruesome? Pretty gruesome. What the fuck? <laughs> Wait, you you couldn't think of anything fucking better than that. It's at this point in the movie, like after the strip club, and then they go into the police story. Is basically, I wrote the comment on Facebook. I think I said something along the lines of, "This reminds me of the kind of fiction I would have written in my teens after a wet nightmare." <laughs> Wait, a wet nightmare? I, I don't want to know. The same thing as a dream, only it kind of scares the shit out of you, but also got the job done at the same time. Yeah, okay. When I said I didn't want to know, that was... That, okay. So anyway... Uh... <laughs> That wasn't that wasn't a fucking invite. Don't uh, act like you haven't had a wet nightmare. I've never had a wet nightmare. You don't know what you're missing. <laughs> Jesus Christ! All right. Anyway, fuck it. You're also, you up, should man. have watched more Hellraiser. <laughs> okay, I watched Hellraiser. They didn't make me have a wet nightmare. I didn't find the cinnabites or whatever the fuck you call them sexy. Well, that's just your problem then. Well, it's not my problem. It's a preference. <laughs> right. Problem. Move on. Fucking Jesus. So anyway, um. Uh, uh, so I, then, then, and then we have like this long, uncomfortable silence for five minutes as the medical examiner eats food while they're looking at the lady, and it's like this is not a good use of time at all in a movie. So anyway, the lady she looks at uh, uh she walks into her room and she, all her faces are hung up on the wall. All the faces she's taken, and uh, she takes off her face, and we see that her face is her real face. Her actual face is very scarred. Is so, it though? Would you call this very scarred for real? I, I, I would not, but it's supposed to be with the movie. That is what this movie considers very scarred. Is it time to talk about the blatant, obvious misogyny that is dripping from this movie yet? 
It is time. Go right ahead, please, because it's fucking dripping in it. Every man that's in this movie, whenever they come across a woman who doesn't look exactly as they were expecting them to, for whatever reason, they run in abject terror as if Frankenstein's monster just whipped out its dick and said, me fuck you now. (laughs) and yes the women are all absolutely gorgeous absolutely you know what this is supposed to be a comic book movie so i get that this is what the ladies look like in the comic book and in the case of the the uh the actress that is actually playing the looks as close to what that impossibly endowed drawing in the comic book that i saw a photo of looks like the ridiculous shape that like isn't achievable by a normal woman that actress had it she was able to do it like i mean that is as close to a comic book adaptation that you could get visually speaking. Yes. So all the women that are in this are going to be exactly, I hate to say it, but Glenn Danzig's fantasy of what women should be. And Glenn to, Danzig's kind of fucked up, right? Right. And to have a woman who has a face that is scarred in such a way that is not really that bad be, for whatever reason that's not fully explained, start killing women to take their face so that she can continue to dance for men's pleasure, even though they're still reviled by the face that's not really a face and she's still wearing a mask over it. There's a whole lot of very unsubtle devaluing of women in this storytelling, just right out there in your face. The way that they're doing it like it's all in how the women look the men can't handle women not being absolutely perfect in the reactions and every single woman is selected for this film specifically because of how they look and i get that that's part of the comic book adaptation to make them look as close to they look in the comics the comics they're going to draw them like they look <laughs> like these women actually look i get that that's fine yeah but it just keeps permeating and as we go further and further along in the stories all of the stories have to do with in some way shape or form women not being able to be attractive to a man for whatever reason and doing horrible things to remain beautiful like that's the whole through line of this fucking movie and it's really in your face about it and there's a bunch of other little tiny things here and there that i can't even remember off the top of my head but it was at this point with this movie where i was like wow i think glenn danzig hates women well, he definitely hates women. Yeah, he's got a he's he's definitely got a a, a pretty good problem with it. <laughs> oh, this movie is ruining my life, Matt. Yeah, this movie's quite grotesque. I mean, I I I I, I would hate to be a part of it. <laughs> All right, let's keep going. All right, fuck it, why not? Uh, so anyway, um. Uh, so then we have some more, what you would consider porn caliber acting, uh, and then they, uh, the lady, uh, cuts off another woman's face. Um, so, uh, there you go. That got done. Uh, thanks, uh, movie. Uh, that actually wasn't too bad when you saw the actress of their face off. I, I didn't think. I thought that was okay. Um, it could have been worse. Yeah. Uh, um, the scenes where she's dragging the knife along on some of these are really fucking terrible because you can tell that yeah. she's just squeezing blood out and the knife isn't even pushing against the skin in any way, shape, or form. And then yeah. at one point she drags the knife up and then the blood drips off the knife down to form the line and there's no obvious cuts happening. I think that's in this sequence. Um, the other one where she's like, thanks for giving me your face. Like it was all just super quick cuts and like you didn't even see anything. And then the after effect of the first killing looked really great. The skinned face is hanging on her wall. Like they look like they've been tanned in some way to maintain them. And like, she's really got this game down for stealing other women's faces, you know, like that's get that that's cool the idea for the story it kind of makes sense in a weird sort of psychotic way but there's real no no pathos to it like that explains why she's collecting faces <laughs> you know like whenever the guy in pieces which makes the least amount of sense of any slasher movie i've ever seen starts collecting pieces of people you know it's because he's obsessed with the puzzle of a naked woman yeah right we're just supposed to assume oh her face is scarred up therefore she's wearing other women's faces to be hot like that's the story we're being told here Pretty much. Um, so anyway, uh, we uh, are back at the strip club, and she dances again. And while she dances, she keeps saying faceless girls uh, with horrendous makeup in the audience. So, it, all right. It looked like it was the makeup that was used on some of the other actresses that was mixed up, and they just had sit-ins where she was having visions of previous victims. Um, there's a lot of moments that are held on too long 
There's a lot of this stuff that needs to be tightened up in the editing. There's moments where the actors are done talking and then they oh, just. If you thought editing was a problem, wait till we get to the next story. Right, right. But like, there's moments where like actors will just stop talking and then freeze. And then like a couple seconds later, then we cut. The actors yeah. are freezing because they're expecting the director to say cut. And then there's nothing but silence. Holy conniption fits. That happens. Are you ever fucking right? There's quite a few spaces that that happens in the movie. Literally, like right before every cut, as soon as dialogue is delivered, there is a good space of like like a half a second to like two to three seconds before we cut away after someone's done talking and they hold on that stuff. Uh, the effects, everything's are held on too long. Um, the dancing sequences that don't quite fit with the music that are being done for these supposed strip teases, which are more like just burlesque dances at this point. Uh, they don't really match up and then they also hold on some of those moments for far too long and it really messes with this it just feels like this was assembly edited and then nobody tightened up any edits from there yeah no yeah you're exactly right um so anyway um uh the cops talk over the body of this other victim that just happened and they find a card for the strip club well the cop goes and he interrogates the doorman of the strip club who is x-pac and that's our final clip of the night kelly pd i want to ask a few questions um okay we haven't done nothing though look every one of your dancers pretty sure she's a feature here goes by the name of mystery girl you got a lot of girls here, mister. I don't know all of them. The name is Sergeant Anders Fuckface. You're going to tell me whether she's here or not. You got it. So, uh, another girl uh, overhears all this, and she runs and tells Mystery Girl and says she'll run interference. When the cop finally gets to the dressing room, the cops, uh, the girls hold him up, and uh, he's kind of, you know, questioning them, and he's pointed into a dark room. As he goes in there, she jumps him and cuts his face. But he is able to shoot off a couple of rounds, and she is injured and runs off. We then go six months later. We're at another club, and a new dancer named Mysteria dances, and we see it's the mystery girl. Uh, so then we cut back to host lady. She's holding up a face, throws it back on a corpse. Time for story number three, and that's the end of story number two. All right, real, 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 real quick. From beginning to end, nothing about this makes any kind of sense. Uh, the erotic portions of this, which should be happening with the dancing, is extremely, extremely unappealing, even though that dance done exactly the same in film, just a little differently, probably would be quite appealing that a lot of these ladies were doing. We've seen that in a Sedaris movie where things could be filmed very badly, but the dance would still be very appealing. Yeah. Nothing about this story works. Nothing. I don't know about you, Matt, but if a stripper named Mystery Girl popped up with a mask on, I think I would leave the club. Yeah. I'd be like, oh, I don't know what the fuck's going on around here, so time for me to get the fuck out. This is getting to be a real eyes wide shut situation. It's time to go. Yeah. Like, I'm thinking, is this like a secret fucking government cult thing that's getting ready to happen are we like completely utterly fucked right now i better leave they're trying to sell mystery girl as like this hard-working stripper that makes like a good amount of money for the club and like she's a featured performer and like everybody gets excited but the minute somebody gets too close to her they're terrified of her and they run away because they saw something weird and like under her eyes that didn't make sense so they got scared and took off yeah right I, I don't, I, yeah, like, because you can tell there's like skin there and it's all discolored. So, right. you, uh, y yeah, I mean, do the other girls that work with Mystery Girl know this that she's wearing? I, other I don't women's think faces? they know she's wearing other people's faces. I think it's just like, uh, you know, a solidarity thing. Like, well, cops are looking for Mystery Girl, probably horse shit because, you know, fuck cops. So, so, lay next snap out and Mystery yeah. Girl. I think we have a villain naming problem. Yeah, um as well we have a creativity problem. Well that that's uh that went without that's a fact. That went without saying thus far. I'm starting to rethink <laughs> my love of dancing altogether i mean i uh, i would definitely start because uh that motherfucker he he owes everyone a, a little bit of money back in my opinion except for you yeah i didn't pay for this so it's not i, I and i literally don't even care if anybody does pay it back fuck it everyone does what they want but uh i'm just saying <laughs> fucking wow this is really really bad and this is making yeah. me really really kind of wonder things about glenn danzig that i didn't want to think more about but okay let's go he fucking hates women, man. That's a 
that's a fact right now. It's a big time fact. All right, let's go. <laughs> at least so we go. at least in this in this storyline and this unabridged, obviously uncontrolled, untethered version of Danzig Zid that is this movie, there is very serious pinnings of misogyny that make me really have a hard time saying, No, I don't think he necessarily does. Maybe that's just the art. No, this is making me worry. It really is. I mean he's got a lot of problems. So uh, anyway, we go to the third story, and we see a lady, and she's covering herself in blood, and we seem to be in the medieval days. Uh, we find out you know, she's a contessa. Uh, she goes into town, and she buys a virgin from her own mother uh, for some gold coins. He brings her back to her castle. And, I mean, you already know kind of where this is fucking going, just from the first opening scene. It's and Elizabeth la- Bathory. It's obvious. Yeah. yeah. It, and her lady servant prepares the young lady for what is supposed to fucking, I guess, happen now. Um, Whatever that fucking is. Yeah, we're not so told. Anyway. You're just supposed to, because it's Elizabeth Bathory that takes a shorthand yeah. on you, and you know she's being prepared for a bath, even though it's never said you're being prepared for a bath. Yeah. So anyway, um, as they prepare, uh, so then she has a um lineup, and she picks one of the girls, and the, con- you know, and the contestant says, come on. So uh, the lady tells the contestant all is ready, and we cut to a girl who's risk are cut and she is bled out into like a pool and the contessa bathes in it in her blood for like fucking ever i mean this scene goes on for fucking ever when i say it goes on for fucking ever with no dialogue nothing just her smothering fake fucking blood all over her that's all this is to danzig this is a sexy shower scene matt well fucking danzig is doing some horse shit um, can, can I just say that her smearing fake blood all over her is probably the thing I've enjoyed the most in this movie? Geez. Well, I mean, I yeah, I went. To, it just went on even too long. I just was too. Even if this is a normal shower scene, I'd be like, this is entirely too fucking long. <laughs> Yeah, well, this is clearly, again, an editing problem, but also they paid for this really expensive Danzig skull-headed fucking golden bathtub for her to sacrifice virgins and bathe in, yeah. and they also paid this actress to get naked and roll around in k syrup or whatever type of blood they decided to make for this scene, and so they're gonna shoot it. And you have to watch all seven and a half minutes of her rolling around in there. Well, anyway, they finally bring in another girl, and... uh so literally, finally, it's like we're in here for like minutes on end, just wondering yeah. what's going to happen I, next. When I say finally, I mean it fucking finally. Um, and so then uh, they uh, they bring in this other girl and she slits her throat and she gets like a sprinkler of blood coming out of her throat that she also bathes in. And we have another hour and a half, what it seems like an hour and a half of bathing. Fucking forever. Which, again, it's supposed to be erotic, and in some points it actually is, but after a while, you really get tired of just seeing the same actress covered in fake blood. And that's yeah. me saying that. I never thought I could get tired of a naked actress covered in fake blood, Matt. And, and yet, here Danzig, we are. Danzig made that happen. Only Danzig could do that, Matt. Oh, I mean, I guess you could say that's pretty fucking amazing. Uh, it's an achievement. Uh, sure. I mean, why not? Um. So then, uh, let's see here. Fuck, how did I get lost on this movie? All right, so then, uh, let's see. All right, so then she finally gets out, and she talks to her servant lady as she's kind of being dressed. She's like, look how great my skin looks. Look at, you know, how everything looks great. It's because of this virgin blood. Doesn't it look great? Blah, blah, blah. So then uh, we cut to a girl hanging upside down, begging for help, and then the Contessa slits her throat and, again, bays in her blood. So, uh, uh, I mean, oh, holy, this is so worthless. I mean, what are we doing? What what the hell is going on? Does it feel to you like there were actual scenes of hardcore penetration and or sexual things mixed in with all of this stuff in the movie that got excised and the hour and 29 minutes that's left is what's just left? Yeah, it's like, um, it's almost like, I mean, minus all the nudity we did see. It's almost like this was a porno and they cut everything for like USA up all night. Yep. Okay. Move on. That's exactly what I was looking to say. Yeah. So, okay. So then, uh, after all this, the, the Contessa rides on her horse at night 
crawls around the woods and finds a wolf and talks about how they both like to feed off virgins and no one understands it, but it doesn't matter. It was the weirdest fucking thing I've ever... I, I don't know what this is. So she gets another virgin and cuts her open and then reaches inside and pulls out her heart and eats and slash plays with it. And that also lasts forever. So thanks, movie. I, get, I, I fucking... I don't know. There's no thank you. This is fucking horrendous. <laughs> Fucking, what the fuck? <laughs> We're still what like a- an hour and 10 minutes into this hour and 29 ish minute movie. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, man. So, anyway, good times. So, uh, let's see. Then a girl runs away, but she gets caught, and the Contessa has her head chopped off. Uh, so they de- behead her. And then the Contessa, we, she walks in holding the head, and she has a lot of heads mounted of all the virgins. And then we end with our host bathing in blood, wishing us goodbye. I don't know what the fuck the end of that third story was. It was entirely fucking worthless. Thanks for nothing. Fuck off. Roll credits. Goodbye. All right. First of all, I feel I owe Rob Zombie a tremendous apology after watching this movie. Yeah. Yeah. Because of yeah, um, okay, giving a lot of shit to some of his movies. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, I've said some very, very unkind things about him, and if nothing else, I've realized that he knows enough about the technique of his craft that he tried to do with filmmaking, or at least surrounded himself en- with enough people to make the things he wanted to have happen happen. Granted, I may have very serious problems with some of his story elements and his style of storytelling and directing, but that is a matter of taste. I yeah. really I really hate to say this, but I don't think Glenn Danzig has any business making movies at all. He, he definitely does not have any business making movies at all. He should never be allowed to do this again to anyone else. And I, I'm, I'm not saying that he shouldn't make movies. I'm saying that he should learn how to make movies before he makes movies. Like, I mean, hold on. There was no one on the set that was trying to be like, no, you might want to do another take of that. Like, is he like Ed Wood? Like, is he the fucking punk rock Ed Wood? Where like, everybody's like, no, you really want to take another t- ah, nonsense. We're going to move on. You know yeah, what I mean? Maybe. Like, I mean, maybe he's like, this is how I want to live my life now. Fuck you guys. I mean, okay. this is what I'm going to do. Right. Okay. Now I know the Veronica comics have basically the exact same stories. Like he obviously didn't really change the stories at all. If he made the albino spider of the Jeet or whatever it is take place in France, even though it was filmed in Los Angeles, you know, like even though it it's, you know, not anywhere near there, he still made it take place there because that's part of the story. Like he clearly wanted that. He clearly made that choice. He had all of those people learn to speak in that dialect right like that all makes sense they put in all this work to do all of that and yet he doesn't tighten up on the editing at all like no clearly no one told him he needed to edit that more he clearly didn't show that to anybody that like anyone who's ever done any editing at all would have looked at that and been like dude you need to tighten up the editing on this like you got an assembly edit here but this is not done you know what i mean despite the other things because there are shots in this film that are really well composed and the costume department Department is on point like they make that actress with the wig and everything that looks like the, the character of Dejit they make her look like the comic book drawing of Dejit really fucking well like there's been attention to detail on this whoever did that kind of stuff there was some hard work put into this movie but the overall thing whenever it's assembled is this just crazy uncontrolled boomer nutso fucking metalhead weird sadomasochistic sex dream of a movie that really has no cohesion, no real throughway for the plot. It's an anthology in that there are three different stories with a host, but there's no concise start or stop to the stories other than the host to tell you that they're done. There's like a title card to tell you that it's a new story, but there's no real sense of closure to any of the stories. There's no ending. It doesn't, it feels like they're trying for those EC comics twists where, you know, like the big bang at the end of it, like, you know, ready for the Crypt Creeper to come in, like kind of just real 
real ironic death or some shit that happens to your villain. Something like that. Like it's like they're trying for that, but like in a real half-hearted juvenile way. And like I know that some of the Veronica comics were written by like actual comic writers. You know, it was just he wanted to have violent erotic comics, and so that's how it goes. I don't think that anybody but Glenn Danzig wrote any of these three stories. As a matter of fact, I know that the albino spider of Dejit he did write for sure. Uh this well, I don't is know just if anybody wrote the third story. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, there wasn't a story. I, I mean, it, there was no clear point to any of this. It was just watching her bathe. Now, yeah. if this is supposed to be an adaptation of erotic comics, and they're like true erotic comics where maybe there isn't a story, maybe there's just several panels of a woman bathing naked in blood so you can look at drawings of naked women and doing horrendous things to other naked women, that makes sense on that aspect of stuff where it's like, hey, this is just this is just the story. Here it goes. She buys a virgin, she kills a virgin. You know, and then here's your, here's your fucking erotic, vi- your violent erotica. You know what I mean? Like, that's what they're dishing up for you. But that doesn't... Yeah. That doesn't work whenever you convert that to a live action story where there's actors and people that are actually like going for it. Like you could make a faithful adaptation that's 100% that, but just because it takes up three pages on a comic book doesn't mean it's going to translate into a film. Yeah. You know, and I'm talking to Zack Snyder on this as well, (laughs) by the way. (laughs) (laughs) Well, you're not excited for the Snyder cut? I I don't give a fuck. Um, (laughs) <laughs> Although I got to say, um, Zack Snyder probably owe him an apology now too, that I've seen Glenn Danzig's Veronica. Um, <laughs> no, um, this movie is worse than any Ed Wood movie I have ever watched. And I've watched almost all of them. Seriously. It is more ineptly made than several Ed Wood movies that I've watched. Yeah. I'm sorry, but he is no longer the king with the moniker worst movie ever made. For me and my money, Glenn Danzig has dethroned Ed Wood for that. I know that's a bold fucking statement, but that is how I feel. This is the most miserable slog of a movie I've ever had to get through in my life. It was not good. I watched it fucking twice because I wanted to cover it on the show. And I knew if I knew if you knew I was watching it twice, you'd have nothing to complain about other than how bad it was. (laughs) I uh I have nothing to complain about. Yeah, you 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 holy fuck. At least it's so ridiculous you're shocked at how bad it is the first time you watch it. The second yeah. time through, it is even more fucking enervating. Don't watch it again, Matt. There's no I'm reason for you to, to watch this again ever. I I I've I deleted it already. Are you kidding me? I'm fucking done. <laughs> Right. Now, this is never going to happen again. I am going to make other people suffer through this because that is my mission in life to make other people feel the pain that I've subjected myself to. Of course. I mean, that stands to reason. Yeah. It's the only thing about this movie that stands to reason at all. (laughs) Yeah. I mean, wow. That was that was something, huh? I am so livid and so frustrated. I can't even begin to describe how inept and how poorly put together this is. It's. It's really bad. Okay, there is one movie that I think is actually still worse than this. Yeah. And more inept, and that's Birdemic, for sure. Birdemic? Yeah, don't bother. You don't want to see it. Well, maybe you you do. It's bad. It's really bad. It makes this look like a well-put-together film, because the other stuff that happened in the background, all the things that I had to say in praise that was happening in this movie, like the costuming, the sets, all that kind of stuff. Yeah. None of that is in Birdemic. Oof. Oof. But this is oh, this man. is a very frustrating film. And as far as narrative goes, by far, this is way worse than Ed Wood. And Birdemic's even worse than this. Wow. Man, this, is, this is something. Yeah. All right, I let's mean, bring... I'm, I'm fucking tired. Let's bring everybody out of this fucking Floyd hole that we're in right now of suck that right. is Verotica. We're going to play the Corrupted Youth promo. We're going to have a little bit of music that fits in with this very Danzig, very 90s pseudo-industrial world that we're living in. When we come back, we'll have some PSYOP news. Taste colors beyond any known spectrum as phonic euphoria cascades into your consciousness. Observe the laws of physics no longer applying to an existence that confines. Space and time will unravel and reform to a screaming new dawn, bursting with infinite possibility. It's as easy as listening to the Corrupted Youth Podcast, where the father-son duo of Dan and Brennan explore the latest blockbusters, classic genre films, and the schlockier of Golden Age VHS rental store flicks in spoiler-heavy fashion. Corrupted Youth Podcast is available on Podbean, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Play, and more. 
Take a break from reality, unlock your infinite cosmic potential, and become a dongle. beat that feels a little bit more like we want to be feeling not how down and sad we were from covering Veronica. Woo! Yeah! I mean, holy shit, that was fucking terrible. <laughs> I'm telling you, fuck me dead. That was shit times 20. Uh, that's a whole bunch of invites I'm not going to touch, so give me some sorrow news. Comes from Mystique. That's our boy Ken from Rhode Island. Man arrested for going. Oh, fuck. Hold on. Pop ups are a fucking killer. Fucking this thing gives my mobile home cancer. All right. Man arrested for going through Taco Bell drive through naked. Says clothes were in the washer. This is out of Oklahoma City, Oklahoma. All cops so, are duh. bumbling dummies. To yeah, the, the Oklahoma police. City. Yeah. I mean, they don't help. I'm going to stockpile the, all my guns because cops don't help you. This is very true. The Oklahoma City Police Department responded to a Taco Bell in the 1000 block of South Meridian Saturday night, just before 9 p.m., in reference to a call about a man going through the drive through naked. I'm already getting or, arrested. I might as well grab this guy's dick. Yeah, I mean, you can do that if you want. According to police reports, Christopher Sale, 61, was in his vehicle in the drive through completely naked. Shut Shut up. up. Are you talking about penises? Yeah, and Echo. Uh, Sale paid for his order at the restaurant and then reportedly asked the employees to uh, for an additional taco. And I mean, we're back to dicks. I was going to say, is that, is that what we're doing now? Just, just fucking, you're like, yeah, come on. What's what's the worst thing that happened? Afraid of vaginas? Me an extra taco. I mean, I, he probably is. Afraid yeah. of vaginas? Uh, I mean, if I had to guess money, yeah. Vagina yeah. smells like dead body. I mean, yeah, probably. Um... Uh, and probably the ones this guy gets does. Uh, let's see here. He uh, he asked for another taco. Yeah, yeah. Uh, one of the employees was not comfortable with this, and another employee really gave him the additional taco when he then asked for more sauce. Still not leaving the drive-thru. So now I'm starting to get the idea this guy wants to get caught. My dick and balls are worth a lot more than $60. Well, that's good for you. Of course they are. Um, Sale uh, asked for napkins after receiving the sauce and then eventually left the drive-thru, only to come back and ask for more sauce for his food. Okay, this this is starting to this is starting to creep into he wants to he wants he wants to get caught type stuff. Yeah, this I mean, guy am I, am I wrong? No, this guy clearly not necessarily he wants to get caught, but he wants to make people uncomfortable. He wants to see how long he can get away with this. He's like basically showing off what it is that he thinks he has to show off to shock people, and he's like a flasher. Only he's doing it from the car. Yeah, and, and I don't think they were giving him the response he wanted, and that's why he kept coming back. I have a ragey direction. When the police were able to detain Sale, he told them that he was hungry and that all of his clothes were in the washer. He also stated to the police that he didn't know it was against the law to drive naked. It's going to cost you some serious cock. Yeah, I mean, I would agree. But uh, yeah, there you go. So uh, guys, you got to stop. Got to stop doing that shit. You can't um, pay your bail? Well, I could probably fix that for a blowy. Because that shit's not going to help you. It's the erection that counts. No, it's not. It's not the erection that counts. You can't do that. Oh, he's looking for Wang. Well, he he, he wanted everyone to look for his Wang. I'm, and I'm other sure. poor sex news. <laughs> I mean, that, yeah. I mean, I don't think it was right, probably yeah. would, though, to get that kind of, you know, <laughs> let's, attention. Let's... Let's uh let's do another one. Come on. Yeah, yeah. I know. I'm lo- I'm looking for one while we're going through all this. <laughs> There's a whole bunch in the bum us out. There's a whole bunch in the announcements. Some may bum us out. Some may not. Yeah. 
That's, I know, I'm like, I don't want to get fucking weird about this. All right, well, uh, this one comes from Blue, uh, from the Daily Mirror. Man cuts off ears and keeps them in a jar after paying 6,000 pounds to make his head look like a skull. Oh, yeah. Okay, I've had a discussion with some folks on this online, and uh, yeah. in our group on the actual post for this, I posted a photo of a guy who was able to keep his ears and still look even more skull-like and gruesome than this dude in the story. Really? Yeah, and I should warn you, I looked at the story, uh, it gets real graphic, so you may get a little oh, pukey while you're looking at this. Uh, I'll find ways around this. Uh, anyway, oh, fuck, this is gonna get bad. Alright, a tattoo addict had his ears removed and now keeps them in a jar while spending more than 6,000 pounds to make his head look like a skull. OMG, Norm- a jizz drinking game. It is known as Mr. Skullface on social media, and he insists that even though people call him sick, his transform appearance has made him more confident. Because I like abuse, abuse and retards. Cur- currently unemployed and not in a relationship, duh, Wonder why? the 39-year-old from Finwesterwald, Germany, has undergone 17 extreme body modifications imaginable. I'm going to including- kick shame you for the stabbing fetish, okay? <laughs> I... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> oh, okay, that was well placed. One, hold on, just give you a minute. It's okay, because when I get you to break up like that, they make great outtakes. <laughs> because okay. it's super hot, you should be able to fuck one time. <laughs> All right, so he's under good 17 extreme body modifications, uh, uh, manageable, including forehead implants, forearm implants, uh, so he can look like Popeye, obviously, back of the hand implants, and under the skin payment implant, and tongue splitting. His ears were removed in 2019, and he is now planning to have the tip of his nose cut off and his eyeballs tattooed. He says his decision to change his body in such a drastic way comes from the heart as opposed to his desire to look cool. The extreme look certainly doesn't sit well with everyone, with Sandor omitting that he does not receive uh, plenty. He does he does receive plenty of unwarranted comments when he is out and about. It's going to cost some, you some serious cock. With some people calling him disturbed and crazy. I'm not advocating that, corpse fucking. Finger bang a girl with a corpse hand. Yeah, I mean, he'd probably be into all that. Corpse fucking. But corpse that fucking. Hasn't stopped him from playing his next extreme potty mod, having the tip of his nose removed and his eyeballs tattooed. Safe sex with a dead thing. He said his interest and extreme body modifications was ignited in 2007 after he saw someone on TV who had spikes implanted in their head. This is like traces of death fucked a porno. Until this point, Sandero never wanted anything embedded into his skin, but the moment changed everything. That or they just had a bukkake mouth party. Over the course of 13 years, he's had 17 extreme body modifications as well as more regular face tattoos and nose piercings, with his favorite being his decision to go earless. That cock and shit's like like metal. metal. Uh, To him... Probably. Sandoro uh, understands that making such extreme changes to his appearance has changed his life with his family and friends, even jesting that he is a sick freak. And uh, 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 But he doesn't let it bother him and says that people should accept him for who he is and not the way he looks. Sandoro understands that making such extreme changes to his appearance has changed his life with his family and friends, even jesting that he is a sick freak. But he doesn't let it bother him and says that people should accept him for who he is. Never feeling and not can just be the, overlooked. And not just the way he looks. Vagina he said that like dead body. He said that his transformation has influenced his life, but he doesn't care. He should uh, be accepted as a person and above all because of his inner values. His appearance has had a huge impact on his chances of getting a job because a lot of companies after that. Are still very conservative and prefer to go with the flow. I started doing says, drugs after that. He says that he knows that he's been often rejected from jobs because of his appearance. Is there something do you think he could probably do? You probably could think of some things. Uh, that's me adding stuff to the story. That's my but he fetish. Also, he thinks that, of course, uh, that it has, of course, had an effect on him finding a relationship as it scares most people off. But, of course, many people also find it very interesting. If you he's had friends, fear He's had friends try to talk him out of the modif- modifications, especially when it came to cutting off his ears. But he's uh, just a person who likes to go his own way. I'm going to shove the if, uh, porno magazine down your throat. If people stare, he doesn't care. If someone says something like, you are a sick old man, he will then answer with a thank you for the compliment. 
Uh, negative comments go in one side and out the other. I'm sure that's easier now with both the ears removed. Is that in the article? He, no, that's just something I can't. Well, he, he does. He says uh, he does say negative comments go in one side and out the other. I added in. I'm sure it's easier because the ears are removed. <laughs> wow. <laughs> what? Oh, now I'm the bad guy. Go fuck yourself. <laughs> He's just expressing himself freely, Matt. That's fine, and so am I. So there we go. We all are expressing ourselves freely. Fucking live with it. All right. Uh, however, in good news, it has strengthened his self-confidence above all. Uh, but he does warn those who are thinking about starting on their own extreme body modification journey to exercise caution and make sure they're doing it for the right reasons. I wish somebody would have told me that before I started working on my fat, fat body, because it is certainly extremely fat. He said, if you're a beginner, do long and thorough research, and then carefully about everything you, uh, about everything, and take your time. Uh, he could have told me that before I started downing pizzas and wings and beer every night. Above all, never do something just because you want to make more blatant or be cool with it. And see, that's what I did. I thought being an entirely short breath fat ass was going to be really fucking cool. Um, but he says it has to come for the heart and be yourself. Well, I am doing that at heart. I am a fat kid. So there you go. <laughs> wow. Way to sideload in a bunch of fat shaming. <laughs> now I'm doing it to myself because I'm trying to convince myself to lose weight or else I will die early and quickly there it is he brought the show down folks so now we're gonna end it so we're gonna play the ending (laughs) legion promo we're gonna have a little bit of music that's befitting of danzig or verotica and the industrial sound of the 90s all in one and it's fucking royalty free and i still found a way to make all those things fit nice and once that's played we will close out this overlong really bizarre fucking twisted disillusioning about glenn danzig show if you enjoyed this show, then make sure you check out the other great shows on the Legion Podcast Network, like Cinema PsyOps, Cinema Beef, Devour the Podcasts, Duncan and Bo Come Correct, Exploding Heads Horror Movie Podcast, Friday the 13th, Get Slayed, The Hell Ming Power Hour, Hello, This is the Doom Show, Hero Hero Go Show, Kill the Cast, Underwater Kaiju from Outer Space, Jerry Hates Action, Legion After Dark, Metal Health, Obsessive Cinema, Discourse, Pick 6 Movies, The Podcast by the Cemetery, The Podcast on Haunted Hill, The Psycho Semantic Podcast, Rick Radio, House of Wax, Dude Looks Like the 80s, Rabbit and Red Radio, The Shade Cast, Short Bus Cinema, Two Drink Minimum Commentaries, The VD Clinic, Who Will Survive Horror Podcast, and Which vs. the Doomsday Clock. With such a widespread of shows, there is guaranteed to be a niche for you to fall in love with. Horror, politics, movies, books, sex, music, commentaries, health, video games, kaiju, action, news, comedy, and opinions that would most likely get you killed in some parts of the world. We are proud to bring you some of the best podcasting in the world. Check us out at www.legionpodcast.com iTunes, Spotify, Stitcher, YouTube, and any other dark corner of the internet where podcasts can be found. So those who know, know that that actually fits really well with all three things that I mentioned. Oh yeah, you doing well over there? Yeah. It sounded like, it sounded like you completed. Oh, well, the tension that has been built up in me since I watched Verotica weeks ago and only commented a few things before I stopped in Cinema PsyOps, that tension has now been released. I've been able to vent, if you, you know better? what I mean. Yeah, much, going all right? much, much better. If you'd like to learn other instances where we vent here on Cinema PsyOps, the best place to find that is our landing slash launching page, Legion Podcasts 
youtube.com forward slash cinema dash psyops all previous episodes are still available at that location and that's where this one is now available too and possibly worst episode of cinema psyops <laughs> you think this is the worst one yeah uh, this has been a really good episode about probably the worst movie we've ever covered yeah this is i will say this in all the years this is this is worse than munchies oh wow don't put this that is- out in the universe folks if you want to find out just how bad matt feels this movie is check out our facebook group cinema psyops maybe you can petition him to watch things he's hated before in the past before having to watch this again oh oh not no we can't do munchies again <laughs> that's just no chunky that's chunky that's too chunky for me. You can also find us on Facebook. I am Court Psyops and he is Matt Psyop, but the Cinema Psyops group is where you're going to get the most interaction with like-minded, twisted fucks like you. You can email yeah. feedback to Matt, psyopmatt at gmail.com, and let him know that Munchies is on the prowl for him. He's got to cover that movie one more time. I mean, really? Haven't we done it twice? Yeah, we did a commentary and we... Kind of covered it, but it didn't get recorded. Uh, All right. (laughs) You can also email feedback to court, cinemasyopscourt at gmail.com. Tell him, no, that's not good enough. We need you guys to cover the things you hate the most over and over again because your pain is our pleasure. I mean, I think our our members really, that is their biggest kink out of everything is to see us in pain. You can also twit a couple of tweets to a couple of twats on the hate-filled shit fest, though surprisingly pro-kink website that is Twitter. I'm at court underscore PSYOP, and he is at PSYOP Matt. Yeah, I mean, uh, Twitter can uh, can be uh, sort of liberating with uh, some some stuff, you know. Yeah, I like the uh, you have to be so old to follow someone and Twitter will post a whole bunch of wonderful things that uh, Instagram will cut out. That's the other place yeah. that we're available actually is Instagram as cinema underscore psyops, but we have to cover our nipples on that. Yes, I mean, whenever I go on the gram of Insta, I am always, always covering my nipples. I mean, mine pretty much are always covered anyway because they're basically eyeballs, but that doesn't matter. Oh, but don't be shamed by that. I don't want you to be shamed, all right? You're, you are valid. <laughs> well, while you're out there feeling validated, everyone, kick the fuck out of this week <laughs> and make it your bitch. Well, while you're out there feeling validated, everyone, kick the fuck out of this week (laughs) and make it your bitch. I had to pull the chain on it. This is done. I'm done. No more. No more. I'm stopping the recording. Okay. And I'm done.